Hello and welcome to the first VEMCO Biotelemetry User Database, or VEMBU for short, tutorial. Today we will cover opening and closing the VEMBU as well as customizing your variables. The VEMBU is a user-friendly data entry and database system created in Access 2013 for the ingestion of telemetry-related metadata. It was created out of a need to assist researchers in standardizing, organizing, analyzing, and sharing information in a useful and meaningful way. Before we open up the VEMBU for the first time, we need to be sure that we enable macros and access. To enable macros, go ahead and open up a blank version of an access database. You can do this by going to your Windows button and selecting access. For the sake of time, I've already done so. I'll go ahead and open up my blank database. From your blank database, you can go over to the File button, then down to Options. When your pop-up window appears, you can go to Trust Center, Trust Center Settings, Macro Settings, and make sure that this box, Enable All Macros, macros is checked. If this box is not checked, um, the Vembu will not function as it was intended. Uh, you won't get some of the auto-populated fields and there won't be automatic updated, so updating. So this is very important that this is checked. When you're done, go ahead and click OK and close out of your, your blank database. All right, now we are ready to open up the Vembu. Go ahead and navigate to your blank version of the Vembu. A disclaimer notice will pop up that provides a little background on the Vembu, the date it was last modified, as well as contact information if any issues arise. Go ahead and click OK. Every time you open the Vembu, these tabs will open at the top. And throughout the tutorials, we'll go through using the different forms through these tabs. On the left-hand side, you can get a sneak peek at the structure of the Vembu. It starts with a series of tables. The tables hold your master data. They hold the metadata with your receivers and stations and also your deployments and your retrievals. We will not be entering data directly into the tables. Instead, we will use a series of forms to enter data into the tables. Um, this is important to enter data this way uh, because the QAQC rules are built into the forms, not in the tables. Also, there is certain code that will run with the forms that will automatically update some of the information in the tables. And finally, we have what acts as called reports. This is used to export information, and this will be covered in our last tutorial, but this is a um, the type of information that we already share with in fact, which is tag metadata, station metadata. Um, it also includes a deployment and retrieval form that can be used for the fact node and something very similar to be used for environmental sensor data uh, with the Sakura data portal. All right, but today we are going to discuss how to customize the Vembu for your needs. You only need to do this once or you can update it as needed. Go ahead on over and select the Customize Your Variables tab. Data in this form are used to populate drop-down selections in the data entry forms. In short, by entering your variables here, you will not have to type the same information and over and over again. That can lead to slight spelling differences or just be annoying. So this is a long form that we can use the bottom and scroll back and forth. You can see that some of these columns are already pre-populated. We'll go through each of them, but in the pre-populated columns, if these responses already suit your needs, then we would recommend that you try and use one of these. If not, you can always add to it to customize. But there are some columns that are fully blank. So let's start here with the array shortcode. The array shortcode is a six alphanumeric code that is tied to every one of your downloads. You only need one array shortcode. You can imagine, so kind of think of array shortcode is your receiver array shortcode. For this example, I will use TEQ for the Quest of Field Lab. 
if between if when you are moving between columns you get a little error that says something like add new problem I don't know exactly why that comes up um, I doesn't always come up for me what I have found the easiest solution is actually just to shut down and reopen up the bamboo and it tends not to appear okay on to project the project list includes all the projects you work on this is useful information to keep track of what receivers were bought under what project etc and for this example I will use two projects I've named the projects after the funding source, but again, you could use any sort of project name that is meaningful for you. Now we move on to state. This is the main state or territory where your receiver array is located. So if you happen to have two arrays in say two different states, or maybe in vastly different areas, you could add to it here. But right now it is defaulted to Florida. Your tagging short code it's kind of like your array short code, but it just handles your tag information. It's a six alphanumeric code that is assigned to each tag. So like your array code identifies your receiver array, your tagging code is going to identify your different tagging projects and the people that are allowed to access the detection data. So the tagging short code keeps track of who is allowed to access detection data from the fact node. For example, I have two projects here. In one of these projects, I have a collaboration with group with people A, B, and C. So all the tags deployed under that project, I want to be able to share with people from A, B, and C. I would have one tagging code for that. Under this project, I deployed tags with people D, E, and F. So I would have a second tagging shortcode to recognize that for all the tags associated with that shortcode, they can only access that that information. Okay, so we have entered two tagging shortcodes that represent um, the two different groups, the two different collaborations that we support. Okay, common name and scientific name are pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so we have filled in common and scientific names of all of your study specimens. Next is tagging organization. This is your organization that is deploying tags. You don't need to list your collaborators here. Again, pretty self-explanatory, your tagging PIs or who is listed as the PI on those tagging studies. And then we have taggers. This has been a, a useful piece of information if you like to keep track of it. It's useful for IACUC reporting, like who tagged what fish and even internal reporting. How many surgeries has John Smith report, re, uh, performed? And I've filled in taggers and I just scooted down a little bit. Um, so next we're on length other types. There are places in the Vembu or in the tagging form for standard length, fork length, and total length. But if you take any other length types, you can go ahead and add them in here. Um, say for instance, uh, you're studying sharks and you, you um, typically take a clasper length or perhaps uh, mouth size, something like that. Again, you can go ahead and add them here. The same goes with sample types. Um, so it's pre-populated with DNA. Um, sorry, I think it's actually pre-populated with DNA and isotope, but if there's another type of sample that you typically take, let's say perhaps going out of your studying reproduction or blood, anything else, again, you, you can go ahead and add it to the list. The bottom type, water body type, habitat type, and even attachment method are, are here to help standardize the information that you write down, but also being able to share with fellow scientists um, when a tag that doesn't belong to you is detected within your array. So, for example, a tag owner may ask the array owner what the bottom was like around the receiver to add into their analysis. So if we can keep to all the same wording, then it's much easier to share. Um, the bottom type and habitat types, these are based off of um, reporting or permitting requirements or um, words that are used during permitting. Uh, so again, if this applies to you, great, you can use it. If it doesn't, if you have something very different, then you can go ahead and, and add to it. Again, same with water body type and habitat type. 
and attachment method. Move on to sensor type. These are the typical types of environmental sensors, but if you tend to use something different, again, you can, you can add this uh, to the list. And receiver types are based on the current receivers that are manufactured by, Vemba, by Bemco, Bemco, sorry. All right, when you're done, we can click Save. And that is actually it for the first tutorial. You're now ready to use the bamboo. You know, please see tutorial two for adding equipment. Thank you and good luck.